I had a little technical difficulty in trying to get the mystery science to go into the science, straight into the science class. So I'm going to do a Loom video that goes through the entire mystery science. So I'm going to stop talking and I will hand it over to Doug. And then there's a couple of places where things are going to be a little bit different than what it's telling you to do. So I will, I'll cut, I'll cut in and let you know those parts too. So I'm going to hide my face now and I'm going to let Doug take over. Imagine you go on a walk in the park. You take a deep breath of fresh air and suddenly you smell something really, really sweet and flowery. You look behind you and see why. The smell is coming from flowers. Not just a single flower, tons of flowers. All of them on a single tree. It's a tree covered in sweet smelling flowers. When you get home, you send a message to your friend who's away on vacation. You promise her you'll take her to see and smell this tree when she gets back. Two months later, your friend comes back from vacation. It feels like it's been forever. So you take her to the park and you walk toward the tree. But when you get to the tree and look up, you see that the flowers are gone. At first you're bummed, but then you can hardly believe your eyes. In the place where there were flowers, the tree is now full of pears? What's going on here? It's almost as if the flowers turned into pears. But you've already learned that flowers are seed makers. You look down on the ground beneath the tree. There were no seeds anywhere on the ground. Just pears up in the tree. So where are the seeds the pear flowers should have made? So in your reflection journal, think about what happened to the seeds. Write what you think. Have you ever eaten a pear? What's the one part you don't usually eat or you spit out if you do? It's the seeds, right? The inside of a pear contains seeds that the flower made. Now to help you see how this happened, let's watch a sped up video showing the flowers on the pear tree. This video has been sped up over two months. Let's watch. First we see that the petals fall off the flowers. Okay. Now, let's focus on this flower. Watch what it does over two months time. I'm going to pause and let's zoom in on this one and we'll keep watching it. Now, where the arrow is pointing shows where the petals in the flower used to be until they fall off. Let's keep watching what it does over two months. Did you see that? It turns out that the flowers on the tree turn into pears. And the pears contain the seeds on the inside. But did you notice that the whole flower didn't turn into a pear? Just one part of the flower turned into a pear. What part of the flower turned into the pear? Think about that and write that in your journal, what you think. Were you thinking it was where the pollen was? I was. You've already learned how flowers need to get pollinated. That's what has to happen in order for plants to create seeds. But once a flower gets pollinated, what's going on inside the flower exactly? Why is it that the flower getting pollen on its sticky stigma causes it to form a seed pod? Scientists got curious and so wanted to look inside the part that contains the sticky stigma. They cut open that middle part of the flower. They dissected it. 
And inside there, at the bottom of that long stalk that has the sticky stigma on the end, here's what it looks like when they cut it open. They found out that before a flower gets pollinated, there are tiny little eggs in there. You heard me right. I said eggs. What? These are plant eggs. Plants have eggs, just like many animals do, too. Now, the fancy Latin word for eggs is ova. So the part containing the eggs, which we might call an egg chamber, the scientists call it the ovary. When a flower gets pollinated, pollen travels down from the sticky stigma into the egg chamber or ovary and combines with the eggs inside there. It's only once the pollen reaches the eggs that now they begin to develop into seeds, which can grow into new plants. So a plant's ovary or egg chamber, this middle part of the flower that's down below the sticky stigma, once pollen gets down in there, that becomes the plant's seed pod. But with a pear flower, something extra happened. Not only did the eggs in the pear flower's ovary become seeds, but the ovary itself swelled up into sweet, tasty stuff, which surrounds the seeds. That's the pear fruit. The same thing happens with other fruits you know, such as an apple. Apple flowers start out like this, but once pollen gets onto the eggs inside their ovaries, they drop their petals, and the ovary of each flower swells up into an apple. Next time you eat an apple, stop and think about where the flower petals used to be. You know this is the stem. That's the part that grew off the branch. Notice how it's woody. And then if we look on the other end of the apple, we can see where the flower petals were. You can even see some leftover of them. You can use your imagination then and picture how the apple is just part of the apple tree flower. The flower petals were right here. And this part, what you call the apple itself, is the flower's ovary. Inside the apple, we see the seeds which were growing inside the ovary. Let's check out one more example of a fruit you know. See this flower? You can see the ovary is starting to swell up. Can you tell what it's gonna be? Let's fast forward a few months later when the flower has dropped its petals and the flower's ovary has fully swelled up. Are you ready? Yeah. It's a watermelon, crazy. Did you know that watermelons begin as flowers? Yep, every fruit begins as a flower. And don't forget, flowers are seed makers. You can see the seeds of the watermelon right here. In fact, you can always tell if something is a fruit by cutting it open and looking for seeds. A fruit is a tasty container full of seeds. But not all plants grow tasty containers around their seeds. Remember these? These are the ovaries of what was once a maple flower. Some plants grow delicious fruit around their seeds as the ovary swells up, like apple and pear trees. And other plants, like maple trees, the ovary is not tasty. Why do some plants grow delicious fruit around their seeds? What's the point? Take a moment to think, and I'll pause for about 30 seconds before I hit the hint button. Remember, plants need their seeds to move away from them. So if there's fruit around their seeds, possibly something that's alive might eat it. And wouldn't that move their seeds far away? Ah, let's learn more. Do you like to eat fruit like cherries or strawberries? Yes? Well, animals really like to eat fruit too. Animals like raccoons, squirrels, and foxes, they'll eat fruits like cherries and other berries. Some animals eat the same fruits we do. Bananas are eaten by monkeys, which love them. Oranges have been known to be eaten by squirrels. And some fruits, such as these berries, are poisonous to us, but they're okay for certain animals. These birds eat lots of these berries. And think about it. When an animal eats the fruit, it also eats the seeds inside. Animals are constantly moving around, so eventually the animal goes somewhere after eating, 
And when it takes a poop, it also poops out the seeds. So the seeds get moved away from their parent plant in this way. In the place where the seeds fall, when the animal poops them out, a baby plant sprouts and grows up. Now we can answer our question, why do plants make fruit? Well, plants like to move their seeds away so that they can spread to new places. Some plants, like the maple tree, use the wind. But some plants make fruit, and they do this to move seeds away using animal power instead of the wind. A fruit is a tasty container for seeds, which can be eaten. Once an animal eats fruit, it usually walks away with it, and so the seeds of the plant get spread. Do you think a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable? Think about that. You're going to look at a tomato a little bit later. Do you think a tomato is a fruit or a vegetable? Depend whether you ask a scientist or a chef. Find out more in the next video. And actually, after I'm going to show you guys some real tomatoes in the video that's below. But now hold on a second. If a fruit is part of a plant we eat that has seeds in it, what's with this green pepper then? It's not a fruit. If you've ever helped chop up vegetables, you might know that many vegetables have seeds in them too, like green peppers. Well, we can see, even here from this photo, that the pepper started out as a flower, and eventually the ovary of that flower swelled up into a green pepper. So does that mean a pepper is actually a fruit? And what about other vegetables with seeds in them? Are they fruits too? If you ask a plant scientist, they'll tell you that, yes, a pepper is a fruit. Any vegetable which has seeds in it is a fruit, according to a plant scientist. Now, if you ask a chef or someone who works in a grocery store, they might remind you, you wouldn't put a green pepper in your fruit salad, would you? So at the grocery store, a pepper is considered a vegetable. Neither the grocery store nor the plant scientist is wrong. Now wait, you might be thinking, ah, fruit or vegetable? How can they both be right? Both of them are right because it depends on what situation you're in. The word fruit has two meanings. At the grocery store, fruits are apples and oranges and bananas and so on. The tasty seed containers that are usually sweet. But to a scientist, the word fruit includes even some vegetables. Here's how a scientist thinks of it. If it's got seeds and it's surrounded by a thick container, then a scientist says it's a fruit. A green pepper has seeds surrounded by a thick container. So to a scientist, a green pepper is a fruit. All right, so here's the part that's gonna be a little bit different. Let me open up the menu. Okay, well, you should still be able to hear me. Um, on this part, I'm going to show a few more slides, and then I want you to pause and go into the video that I'm showing you, and make sure you have your science cami document open. So you're going to need to leave here, and you're going to need to... Let me go into the science. You need to leave here. The video that I'm making right now is going to be at the top here, but then you're going to need to come in and get this link for the science assignment. That'll open up in another tab, and you're going to watch this video in order to do the assignment, and then you're going to want to go back. Oops, that's not it. And finish the mystery, okay? So you want to click that link here. See that blue hyperlink? That means that's a live link. That's gonna give you the Cami assignment. Then you're gonna look at the YouTube video that I uploaded that shows all the veggies. And then you'll come back to the mystery, science mystery, which is not here yet because 
we're still in the middle of it, but you'll see it very soon. All right. All right, now that you have your supplies, listen carefully and I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Pay attention, if you don't listen, you won't know how to play. Here's how it's gonna work. Your teacher's gonna hold up five different foods, one at a time. With each food, you're gonna decide whether you think it's a science fruit or a science vegetable. You'll do this by answering the first question on your worksheet. It's the question that says, what do you think it is? If it's a science fruit, you'll circle that. And if it's a science vegetable, you'll circle that. Don't do this now. Wait till we start playing and your teacher holds up each food. That's when you can guess what you think it is. Then, after your teacher has held up each of the five foods and you answered the first question five times, your teacher's going to pass out slices of each food. What you'll do is you'll take each slice and look carefully to see if you can find seeds. If you do see them, you'll dig them out with your toothpick. And then when you do that, you can answer the second question there on the worksheet. So just Finally, ahead, as the very last thing, just as a heads up, of course, I won't be passing it around to you because you're doing this virtually. That's why you're going to pause after this part and go into the video where I'll show it. And the part where it says, what did the class decide? You're going to predict because we're not going to be able to discuss this until we get back together tomorrow. So you're going to predict what you think the class decided. All right. So we've completed the exploration and activity. If you want, um, next time, next week, I'm going to go in and, and share with you why some apples, why are some apples red and some green. And I might put some of these extensions there for the next week. All right. So that's the end of our science mystery. I'm going to end this loom. And I'm going to upload this video to the science assignment.